Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ian Coaster 100. We're getting ready to play the Stanley Parable full game, not just the demo. And I figured out finally what was wrong with it. You had to go in here to video, change it to widescreen, because for some reason, the game starts out in 4x3. I don't understand that. I don't understand why. Is that like a, like, like, like kind of like, ha ha, ha, like, because 4x3 would be that, that kind of monitor, the old CRT monitor? I, I bet that is. I bet that is. Hmm. Hmm. They're fucking with me even before I begin the game. Jesus, these guys think of everything. It has to be it. That has to be it. Nobody would make a game nowadays in 4x3. That's dumb. That's dumb. So they had to be fucking with me. Now set my timer here. Somebody asked me, they were like, what does your clock look like? And it looks like that. It's uh, real nice, easy to read. I can tell exactly how long it's been. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it so winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Whoa, I walk fast. Can I jump? No. I can crouch? Yes. And it's not locked. Yes. Flashlight. Tab. Inventory. Okay. I think all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Mouse is kind of... Mm. There we go. Ooh. The mouse is weird. So this is what I thought the demo was going to be. Someone told me that you, all your coworkers are gone. Oh man, I'm very excited. The demo had me busting up laughing. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. No. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. He did. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <sighs> but eager to get back to business, 
Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. No, I didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> oh no, I've already got the giggling. I can't jump. <clears throat> Penalty. Misuse of cargo lift. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. Five grand. Look, Stanley, I oh, think perhaps shelves. we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story is... What? Really? <laughs> I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? <laughs> I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something no. beautiful. Oh. No, let me prove it. Oh. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Okay. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Do I do it? I'm not gonna do it. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. No! I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. <laughs> no! I'm not gonna. Uh, oh, blue door! <laughs> All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Oh, I love Broken it. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for... Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Is five good or is one good? Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did yeah, I good, know man. the game needed a third door? Oh, man. Well, it's instinct mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Huh? Wait a minute. What is going on here? Okay. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I didn't understand hey, it. I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? 
Perfect. Let me boot it up. <laughs> Did he... <laughs> Doesn't even give you a second to say anything. In this uh, game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. Do of I course, hit the button? The message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. Four so hours? Why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective. Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Do I? <laughs> oh, yeah, that baby's going into fire. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely yes. despite me? Yes. Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. It's both. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <laughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Well, Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll no. say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I <laughs> will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course, and just to finish it all off, yes, it's complete. I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Uh. Uh, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, oh. step inside and make yourself comfortable. The snarkiness is amazing. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond this... everything. It's like yes, making yes, fun yes. of Come Minecraft. On, we have to go mining. Where? Oh. Am I seriously just going to have to play Minecraft? I've, I've never played Minecraft. Um... Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? No, I haven't. What are those? What are those? Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. <laughs> one out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Uh, okay, new game. Oh. Oh, there was something down there. There's a monster. <gasps> it's the game! <laughs> it's that one! Yes! I don't even know what this <coughs> game is, but I love it. You, but trapped I, in a glass box with no way out. When I played the demo, me oh, it reminded me of this spy. game, and I, I couldn't, couldn't think of the name. Any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? <laughs> I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's this is amazing. Out what the hell this is. Holy shit. This is like a very faithful recreation. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're forte. <laughs> I know that this is genius. Aperture Labs is is who's making the. No, actually, you know what? I think uh, that's plenty. What is I the really name of that care game? Much to see you stumble through any more of these. Ga uh, 
Hello? Hello? Hey, bro. Hello? I wonder what would have happened if I would have, like, followed him what he's told me to do. Hmm? This is awesome, absolutely amazing, but I kind of feel bad. Like, he's like, I made the game, you know? <laughs> like, oh shit, like. <laughs> I kind of feel like I should go back through this game after this and, and do everything that is laid out. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. Please. That's who I yes. am. That I is what need I mean you. to this world. I need oh, you. Yes. So what you mean yes, to me? I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, <laughs> then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Oh. The end is never. The end is never. Oh shit! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Was that one of the many endings? I think that was one of the many, many, many endings. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I do it. I do it. I am a good Stanley. Mm, me, I'm good Stanley. Stanley, I'm good, and Stanley, I'm me. Yet there was not a single person here. Tips either. for not getting Feeling fired. A wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his <laughs> boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other workers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Number of slides on this slide. Slides, charts, charts and slides. That's awesome. Things, money, money, money. Things, but with money to buy more things? Graphs, profits, profits, profits. Target demographic, teenagers. Colored in segment. The stock market is somewhere here. I would love to just sit in here and read all of these. Synergize, corporate, shift global market. Parad. Monetize, free to play. Okay, what am I doing? Ooh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Oh, I, I don't want to do what you say so bad! There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. How much is he going to talk shit on me? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. Okay. Is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Doing sweet fuck all. 
Okay, I left. I'm happy. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I have to go down the stairs now. Red button. But Stanley just couldn't Shh, do it. Shit. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, I guess we're going why this, had he taken that risk? This path All now. he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, I'm dreaming! <sighs> this is all a dream! Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Ooh. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so oh. much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, <laughs> and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, he oh, no. speak these words was oh, no, shocked bro. Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. Hey, me, I me, wish me, it me, to me, be me, over. Me. Let me go back to my snoo job. Snoo snoo. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Me, I'm dreaming. Yeah. It's all I want. Snoo I snoo. want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. This is another ending. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, <laughs> someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black.
This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> and although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. What it is the last number on the license plate of that car? In a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Go back and look at then it. she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I'm not sure how many endings there are, but I've heard there are a lot. This looks different. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to. At least until something interesting comes along. Yet there was not a single person here either. To Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'm going to my boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm going upstairs to my boss's office. Don't you worry about a thing. We're going up here. How come my boss's office is all nice? Should be... Have a gross office, too. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered <laughs> in disbelief who dumping pollution. This, what dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's I am the most expensive guarded boss. the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. The keypad behind the boss's desk. Oh, there it is. Okay, hang on. I want to read these pictures. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. <laughs> I want to mess it up so bad. I want to hit the wrong. I want to hit the wrong. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. <laughs> and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what to do? <laughs> Well, what do you do? Oh, oh, okay. I thought maybe I got stuck under something. I pushed a button. I pushed it.
Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. The creepy underbelly. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, oh, oh come on! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Are you gonna shut? Are you shut? Oh, creepy long hallway. I gotta go. Although I have to... this passageway had the word escape written on it. The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Yeah? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Oh, should I? At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. What do I do? Well, it came this far. <laughs> There's so many things you could do! As the machine whirred into motion, Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. He reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't oh. see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story. My Trapped life, forever bullshit! In his vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Okay, bye. Yeah. Farewell, Stanley, cried huh? the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Huh? Huh? But it didn't. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? What? Button sounds. Selection of sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. I want to hang out with Davey Rudin and William Pugh because they seem like they are some of the funniest dudes that possibly could ever exist to come up with this and have this kind of, I don't know, vision. This is, this is so wacky, like mind blowing. An early version of the maintenance room. Oh, cool. The office.
early in development we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. Uh, all right. This building is fucking awesome. What am I doing? This is just nuts. The boss's office. Where do I go? What do I do now? That's wacky. <laughs> you can hear it like in, in the actual space of the room. Uh, am I just stuck in here? Okay. Oh, it's office layout, so... That's my office. Come out. Yep. Dooby doo. There's the two doors. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. Yeah. Set of two open doors is the very first concrete piece of Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it. An exploration of the contradiction this room proposed. Okay. Well. That's all well and good. Um, let's get back to the game, maybe? Do I? Oh, I might have just wandered around in there for way too long. Okay. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? Maybe. I don't know. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, I already know this part. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hope coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah, narrator, you know me.
me so well. Mm. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. What happens if I keep hitting the button? Oh, uh, oh, oh. They're going to skip that whole dialogue because I've already done it. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. If I go this way, is he going to have different dialogue? Although this passageway had the word escape written on okay, it, same. the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. I simply have too much to live for. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with Ooh. television screens. What horrible secret oh, did this place it. hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Uh, I love the, the designs of these rooms. It's so fucking cool. Cameras. Lights. Wow, the Cameras. Their true Action. nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. You couldn't really monitor anybody in this room. You'd have, you'd have a real hard time paying attention to anything. I tried to find my. Was I two, two six seven or two seven four? This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Maybe. No. He refused oh. to believe. I refuse. He couldn't accept it. I His can't own accept life it. Life in someone else's control? Never. Never. It was unthinkable. Unthinkable. Wasn't it? It was is. Is it even possible? Is it possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Fuck. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay. Let's do it. I'll, uh... I'll just, uh, I'll look around for a second. Man, I love everything about this game. Five. Facility power. Mind controls idle. Awaiting input. Put yourself in the dirt! And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. This reminds me of a game that I absolutely love. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's called Inside. I should play that again. The game was amazing. These these immense rooms. Uh, and, and, a, and a, like a, a company that exists that just... Ah, if you haven't played Inside, you can play it on your phone. It is a wild, wild ride. I'm going to have to play it. Anyway. Fuck everybody! Did I die too?
blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. I win! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Eat shit! Freedom was mere moments away. I can almost taste yet, it! Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was I don't not give a knowledge fuck. or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Uh, uh gladly. Uh, uh, bye forever. <laughs> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Ah, Stanley's happy. Achievement unlocked. Beat the game. I, I beat the game. What? Huh. I know that I could go through this and do a million other things, but I don't have time for it anymore. Like, I set my timer. That's about all the time I have for this game. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I genuinely hope that you had as much fun with that as I did. I will most likely be playing this again. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.